fast cars, roaring engines, and the smell of burning rubber. This is the thrilling world we associate with Formula One. But have you ever thought about the dramatic battles that happen behind the scenes? The mind games, the strategies, the personal rivalries. Yes, my friends, half the drama in the F1 world plays out off the tracks. Today, we're peeling back the curtains and stepping into that world. Are you ready to join us on this exciting ride? Let's meet the two giants at the center of today's story, Christian Horner and Toto Wolff. Both leaders in their own right, they've become synonymous with their respective F1 teams, Red Bull and Mercedes. They're known for their strategic masterstrokes and team management, but they're equally known for their intense rivalry. So who are they exactly, and how did they become such fierce competitors? Christian Horner, the British maestro, joined Red Bull Racing in 2005. Ever since, he's been the driving force behind their meteoric rise. Horner has overseen the team through its best and worst, proving himself an indispensable part of the F1 landscape. But what about his personal journey? Did you know he once walked the same path as the racers he now manages? Then we have Toto Wolff, the Austrian powerhouse at the helm of Mercedes. Taking charge in 2013, Wolff has guided the Silver Arrows to an era of dominance, making his mark in the annals of F1 history. His strategic acumen and leadership skills are truly remarkable. But like Horner, Wolf too was once a racer. How does that experience shape his approach to management, you wonder? And while they both command respect for their respective achievements, their intense rivalry often steals the spotlight. So what stokes the flames of this rivalry? Today, we're exploring a recent cheeky exchange between the two that sent waves through the F1 community. An exchange that pitted their racing careers against each other in the world's grandest motorsport theater. So without further ado, let's get started. Let's rewind a bit, shall we? We're taking you to the team principal's press conference ahead of the Miami Grand Prix to set the scene. This wasn't any ordinary press conference. Instead, it was a gathering of key players, a meeting of strategic minds. Among them were Toto Wolff, Christian Horner, and Franz Tost, the long-standing team principal of Alpha Tori. This press conference was particularly significant because of an announcement about Tost's future that he would be stepping down from his role at the end of the season, ending an 18-year-long journey with the team. But guess who saw an opportunity in this announcement? Yes, you've got it, Toto Wolf. Wolf, ever the quick-witted one, decided to use the announcement to drop a playful jab at Horner. The nature of the jab? A hint at Horner's potential retirement. Amid the tributes and the praise for Tost, Wolf, addressing Tost and Horner directly, asked, Are you the longest standing or are you the longest standing team principal? And then turning to Horner, he added, OK, so you're next in line to quit. That would make life easier. A joke? Absolutely. But this wasn't just any joke. It was a clever, timely comment aimed straight at his biggest rival, Horner. But let's dig a little deeper. Why would Wolf, out of the blue, suggest that Horner, like Tost, might be on the brink of retirement? Was it just a harmless, off-the-cuff remark, or was there a deeper strategy at play here? Wolf, as we know, is a master tactician. Could he have been trying to unsettle Horner? Add a little pressure, perhaps? Maybe he was attempting to shift the focus from the fierce on-track competition to the off-track banter. Or perhaps it was just a friendly nudge between rivals, a way to lighten the mood amidst the intense competition. Well, it's hard to say for sure, but one thing's certain, his comment definitely stirred up the pot. As for Horner, how did he react to Wolf's surprising retirement joke? Did he laugh it off or did it ignite a spark of rivalry? Well, hold on to your seats because we're about to delve into Horner's epic comeback. So after Wolf's retirement joke, Horner, quick on his feet, wasn't going to let it slide. With a sly grin and a twinkle in his eye, he fired back. I guess it depends if you're a successful team principal or not, Toto. Quite a comeback, wouldn't you say? But was it just a tit-for-tat response, or did Horner's comment hold more substance? What exactly was he implying about Wolf's racing career? Let's peel back the layers and see what's under the surface. First off, Horner's comment seems to hint at a significant aspect of their rivalry. The question of success. By stating, it depends if you're a successful team principal or not, Horner seemed to subtly jab at Wolf's track record. After all, both Red Bull and Mercedes have had their fair share of triumphs and failures, and each team principal has had his highs and lows. 
But was this just a playful swipe, or was it a calculated move by Horner to draw attention to the roller coaster ride that is Wolf's racing career? So, what does this exchange mean for the Wolf Horner rivalry? Is it just the latest chapter in their ongoing saga, or is it a turning point? Well, that's something only time will tell. Remember, this is a game of strategy, of wit, and of sheer nerve. And if this exchange has taught us anything, it's that the world of Formula One is as much about the mind games as it is about the races. So buckle up and get ready, because we're about to go on a high-octane journey through Toto Wolf's racing career. Who is Wolf beyond the business suits and the corporate lingo? What was his life like before he became the master tactician that we know today? Born in Vienna, Austria, Wolf was not just another enthusiast caught in the allure of motorsports, he was a racer himself. His career, spanning over a decade, saw him compete in various racing categories, including the German Formula Ford Championship and the FIA GT Championship. Perhaps most notably, he emerged victorious in the 1994 24 Hours Nürburgring in his category. An achievement, no doubt, but also a testament to his grit, determination, and racing prowess. But as with all racers, there comes a time to hang up the helmet and gloves, a time to step out of the car and into a new role. For Wolf, this transition came in 2006, when he moved into the business side of motorsports. He became a shareholder of Williams F1, and later ascended to the role of executive director at Mercedes-AMG Petronas Formula One team, a position he continues to hold to this day. But this wasn't just a simple career change for Wolf. This was a transformation, a metamorphosis from racer to tactician. And under Wolf's management, Mercedes has enjoyed an era of dominance, securing multiple constructors' championships and drivers' championships. This doesn't just showcase his business acumen, but it speaks volumes about his understanding of the sport, his strategic foresight, and his leadership. Horner's jab at Wolf's career, therefore, isn't merely a trivial comment. It hits at the very core of their rivalry the delicate balance between racing success and team management. And now let's shift our focus to the other player in this high-octane rivalry, Christian Horner. If Toto Wolff's journey was about transforming from a driver to a strategist, Horner's journey is a different story altogether. Horner, an Englishman from Leamington Spa, started his racing career at a young age. His journey began with karting, and from there he quickly rose through the ranks. In 1992, Horner won the Formula Renault Scholarship, and by the age of 25, he was competing in the British Formula 2 Championship. Though his racing career wasn't filled with as many high-profile victories as Wolf's, it did lay the groundwork for the next phase of his life. Indeed, as the tides of time swept over the racing tracks, Horner found his true calling, not behind the wheel, but in the pit lanes. In 1997, he made the bold decision to create his own team, Arden International, in the International Formula 3000 Championship. Under his guidance, Arden quickly emerged as a dominant force. But it was in 2005 that Horner truly entered the spotlight, when he became the youngest team principal in F1 history, taking the reins of Red Bull Racing. Under Horner's stewardship, Red Bull has clinched four consecutive Constructors' Championship titles and launched the careers of iconic drivers such as Sebastian Vettel and Max Verstappen. So, back to Horner's comeback. I guess it depends if you're a successful team principal or not, Toto. The question is, how do their racing careers stack up against each other? Who's had the more successful run? It's a difficult question, considering the different paths they've taken. Wolf, the racer-turned-businessman, found glory both on the track and behind the scenes. Horner, on the other hand, turned a modest racing career into a legendary management run. And there you have it, from the racetracks to the boardrooms, from gripping wheels to steering teams, both Horner and Wolf have traveled long, winding roads to get where they are today. All right, folks, we've taken you through the racing careers, the sharp retorts, and the media exchanges of Toto Wolf and Christian Horner. But let's not mince words here. Is their rivalry merely a series of light-hearted banters, or is there more than meets the eye? Indeed, these two master strategists have had numerous public disagreements that go well beyond the playful jests. Who can forget the heated debate over the aerodynamic regulations in 2021, or the acrimonious clash during the British Grand Prix when Wolf labelled Red Bull as a bad loser? 
And of course, there's the ongoing controversy over engine freezes and cost caps, which continue to be a bone of contention between them. These instances reflect more than just professional disagreements. They hint at a deeper, more intense rivalry. But why? Well, for starters, it's clear that the Wolf-Horner feud has a profound effect on their teams. You see, in a high-stakes sport like Formula One, team dynamics play a crucial role in performance. When the team leaders lock horns, it sets the tone for the rest of the team, affecting everything from morale to strategy. Take, for instance, the effect on Mercedes and Red Bull. Wolf's relentless pursuit of success pushes his team to continually strive for perfection. On the other side of the pit lane, Horner's fighting spirit emboldens Red Bull to challenge the status quo. The rivalry, therefore, shapes not just the narrative, but the very ethos of their respective teams. But what about the broader Formula One landscape? Does the Wolf-Horner face-off ripple beyond their garages? Well, in a word, absolutely. Their rivalry adds another layer to the drama, the excitement and the thrill of the sport. It keeps the fans on the edge of their seats, waiting for the next jab, the next twist, the next tactical masterpiece. Moreover, it sets a fascinating narrative for the media, fueling discussions and debates that keep the Formula One buzz alive between races. Well, folks, there you have it, a comprehensive dive into one of the most intriguing aspects of Formula One, the off-track rivalry between two of the sport's most influential figures, Toto Wolff and Christian Horner. We've journeyed through their racing careers, explored their transitions into management, and examined the sparks that fly when they lock horns. This rivalry, as we've seen, goes far beyond the usual banter. It's a testament to their passion for the sport, a reflection of their unique journeys, and an embodiment of their competitive spirits. How do you see this rivalry? Is it just a case of competitive fire, or is there more to it? Who do you think will come out on top in this ongoing duel of wits and strategies? Will it be Wolf, the racer turned strategist, or Horner, the born and bred team principal? Drop your thoughts in the comments below, we'd love to hear your perspective. And don't forget to stay tuned for more in-depth coverage of the high-octane, high-drama world of Formula One.